everyone, I'm Auntie Moki and it's time for another story. Okay, so today's story is all about a very special animal that lives only in Australia. Can you guess what the animal is? Did you say koala? That's right, koala is an animal that lives only in Australia. But today's story is not about a koala. Guess again. Wombat? Nope, not a wombat either. Platypus? It could be a platypus. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not a platypus either. That's right, it's a kangaroo. Today's story is all about a very special kangaroo by the name of Josephine. The title of the book is Josephine Wants to Dance by Jackie French and it's illustrated by Bruce Waitley. Let's see what happens in the story. Josephine loved to dance. She bounced with the brolgars and leapt with the lyrebirds. Here are the brolgars and here are the lyrebirds. Kangaroos don't dance, Josephine, said her little brother, Joey. They hop. But Josephine took no notice. The emus showed her how to point her toes. The eagles taught her how to soar to the music of the wind. That's Josephine's little brother telling her she can't dance. And here's Josephine learning how to dance. She swayed with the branches in the trees, but still she dreamt of somehow finding another way to dance. There has to be something more, said Josephine wistfully as she danced across her brother. Kangaroos don't dance, Josephine, yelled Joey, ducking his head. They jump. But Josephine kept on dancing. She, here she is, doing all those wonderful dance moves, jumping over her brother, Joey. The next day, Josephine found posters stuck on the tree. The ballet was coming to Shaggy Gully. That's how I'd like to dance, cried Josephine, in a pink tutu with silk ballet shoes. Get real, said Joey. Kangaroos don't wear tutus, Josephine. And they never wear silk ballet shoes. I'm going to, said Josephine pointing her toes. So that's Josephine. She sees the poster stuck on the tree and that's Joey telling her she couldn't possibly wear a tutu or silk ballet shoes. A week later, Josephine sneaked into town. She crept over to the hall and peered through the window as the dancers rehearsed. Cried Josephine. Look at her sneaking into town and watching the dancers through the window. She's hiding in a garbage bin. She watched the dancers for hours. Then she practiced at night all alone. She spun, she swirled, she pirouetted, and at the end she always curtsied. I really am becoming a dancer now, thought Josephine. So that's Josephine watching the dancers practice through the window. Can you see her? The day of the first performance arrived, but the ballet company was in trouble. Ow! shrieked the prima ballerina as she twisted her ankle. Oh! 
sobbed the understudy as she found a splinter in her toe. Who will dance the lead role? cried the ballet director. Who else can leap so high? Josephine jumped! Here's the lead dancer and here's the understudy and they both can't take part in the show because one has twisted her ankle and the other has a splinter in her toe. So the director has to find someone to replace them. <gasps> Through the window went on to stage. Who comes along? Yes, Josephine. A kangaroo, yelled the dancers. There's a kangaroo on the stage. Josephine pointed her toes. She tossed her head. She swayed like the lyrebirds as they called to their sweethearts. She soared like an eagle through the sky. Look at her. A dancing kangaroo, everyone cried. Who ever heard of a dancing kangaroo? Josephine swirled above the stage like the mist playing with the moon. The director stared at Josephine. Finally, she smiled. Mm, well, this kangaroo can dance and she knows the lead role and she can jump higher than any other dancer I've seen. The director took Josephine to the wardrobe department. A kangaroo? exclaimed the costume designer. I can't dress a kangaroo. Just do your best, the director told him. So here's the director taking Josephine to the costume designer. Mm, let's see what he does. The costume designer quickly altered a tutu for Josephine. He stretched some ballet shoes too. They were probably the longest ballet shoes in the world. Look at that. The costume designer is making Josephine her very own tutu. And look at the size of those ballet shoes. Ooh. At last, it was time for the performance. The audience took their seats. The orchestra tuned up. Josephine stood backstage, waiting for the music to begin. Josephine, hissed Joey through the window. What are you doing? Come back to the bush at once. No, said Josephine. I'm going to dance in a pink tutu with silk ballet shoes. I'm going to jump higher than any other dancer in the world. Look. Joey and his friend the Wombat are asking Josephine to come back. Josephine insists that she won't. The lights dimmed, the orchestra started playing, the curtains opened, the performance began. The ballerinas fluttered onto the stage. One, two, three, four, and Josephine! She's doing it. She's living her dream. Someone in the audience giggled. <laughs> it's a kangaroo. Then Josephine began to dance. She twirled through the air like leaves in a whirlwind. She leapt like no dancer ever had before. And at the end, she curtsied like the brawl guys bowing to the sun. Look at her, doesn't she look exquisite? The audience. And then they clapped and then they cheered. Look at them, they're all so impressed. Shocked at first, yes, but eventually so thrilled. This kangaroo is a dancer, they cried. A truly magnificent dancer. Josephine was still curtsying when the ballet director brought bunches of roses onto the stage. Mmm, roses are delicious, decided Josephine, and I am finally a dancer, and it's fun. Then 
to get her. She is the envy of everyone in the audience. And what does she do with the bunch of roses? She starts eating them. <laughs> in fact, dancing looked like so much fun that soon all the audience were bounding and bouncing and prancing and pouncing, bumping and jumping and leaping and thumping, swishing and swirling and twinkle toe twirling. <laughs> Look at them, everybody in the audience has decided they would like to dance too. But nobody ever danced quite like Josephine. That's the end of the story. Isn't that the prettiest story you've ever heard, children? I love this story because it teaches us how important it is to follow our dreams. What would you like to do when you grow up? Maybe you'd like to be an astronaut. Maybe you'd like to be a dancer just like Josephine or a writer. Maybe you'd like to be a rock star. Whatever it is you want to do, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. A little bit of hard work and commitment will make sure you see your dreams fulfilled. Okay, let's look at some of the words we learned in this story, okay? All right, remember Josephine danced, she learned to dance uh, because the brolgas taught her how to and the lyre birds did too. Now brolgas are also birds that live in Australia and they have this gorgeous little dance that they do. All right, lyre birds are just like the peacocks we see in Sri Lanka, but they have a different color. They have a beautiful gorgeous plume as their tail, all right. Now we saw the word leapt, L-E-A-P-T. Leapt is the past tense of leap and leap is another word for jump. Swayed, we know what swayed means. Sway is to go from side to side. Duck, ducking, Joey ducked as Josephine jumped over him. What does it mean to duck? To duck is to whoop, go down to avoid something. A tutu. A tutu is that beautiful fluffy skirt that we see ballerinas wearing on stage. Spun. What does spun mean? To turn round and round and round and round and round. To swirl. A swirl is like what we see in an um, ice cream cone. It goes round and round and goes right up like a spiral. Pirouette. What's a pirouette? A pirouette is a dance move that ballerinas present on stage where they're on their uh, tippy toes on stage on one foot and the other foot is folded and that foot is touching the knee of the foot that's on the floor. Curtsy. You know what curtsy means? To curtsy is a pretty way of, of bowing. You put one foot behind the other and you bow, you curtsy. Now, there was an interesting word called understudy. What's an understudy? Remember the understudy to the lead role also couldn't participate in the show because she had a splinter in her toe. An understudy is someone who would take the place of the actor or the dancer who's supposed to play a particular role. So that in case that actor or dancer falls ill or has an accident, the understudy can take over. What's backstage? Josephine was backstage, remember? Backstage is what goes on behind. It's what's behind the stage. People in the audience can't see it. It's where all the actors and actresses and dancers get ready and prepare for their role on stage, okay? Let's reflect on the story. Number one. We all have dreams. What does Josephine teach us about following our dreams? Number two, what did Joey keep telling Josephine about dancing? Number three, what are the three types of birds that taught Josephine to dance? Number four, what impressed the director of the ballet concert most about Josephine's dancing? Number five, Josephine said, Roses are delicious when she was given a bunch of roses. Why?
Another thing that we noticed in this story, uh, and it's one of the reasons I love this story as well, is the imagery in it, children. Do you know what imagery means? Okay, so imagery is when a writer or a poet uses um, words that describe a beautiful image to explain or describe something. Let's learn the use of imagery. Number one. The eagles taught Josephine to soar. How does the writer describe this? Number two. She twirled through the air like leaves in a whirlwind. Explain in your words what images come into your mind when you hear these words. Number three. When was the last time you went to the beach? Use imagery to describe some of the things you heard, saw and felt while you were there. For example, the waves crashing on the beach, the sun setting at dusk or rising at dawn, or the cool breeze on your skin. So that's another thing that we learned in this story. That amazing tool called imagery. Alright, so that's what I love most about this story. The first is that it teaches us how important it is to follow our dreams. And number two, I love the language and the way the writer uses imagery in it. Alright, that's all we have time for. I hope you enjoyed Josephine Wants to Dance by Jackie French and illustrated by Bruce Wakely. Stay tuned for more on Storyland SL. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook and on our Instagram handle Storyland SL. I'm Auntie Walkie signing off. Bye-bye.